How's it going? Everybody present accounted for? Well, good morning, everybody. It's a pleasure to be in Milwaukee for some really important announcements. First of all, thank uh, Mayor Johnson, County Executive Crowley, Chief Judge Mary Trigiano, uh, State Senator Latanya Johnson, and State Representative Kaylin Haywood, as well as many local and uh, public and elected officials who uh, have joined us this morning, as well as Wisconsin State Attorney General Josh Call. We know this pandemic has challenged our families and our neighborhood and the entire state in more ways than we ever could have imagined. We've seen increased isolation, sickness, grief, concerns about making ends meet, and loss of, uh, loss of routine that uh, has affected so many Wisconsin families. Just like many states across the country, Wisconsin has seen an increase in substance use disorders and overdoses and more reports of mental health challenges like anxiety, stress, and depression, and of dangerous behavior like violent crime and reckless driving. Obviously, we want to build a Wisconsin that works for everyone. And that means communities where families not only have the support and the resources to be successful, but that future where our kids and our families can be healthy and safe. Last October, I was proud to be proud to join many of the same people with me today to announce a $45 million investment into addressing the cycle of violence and crime that for too long had gone uninterrupted. And I was proud that more than $8 million alone came right to the Office of Violence Prevention here in, in Milwaukee. But I said then, and I'll say it again today, that violence is not a foregone conclusion. It is not inevitable. There are more things we can do, and this is another public health crisis that deserves our actions. That work continues here today. So today, I'm announcing that we're investing more than $50 million in grants to support local and tribal public safety agencies to bolster crime prevention strategies and to help alleviate the pandemic-related backlog of criminal cases in Milwaukee County and across Wisconsin. All told, with today's announcement, we're investing more than $100 million of our federal funds that we're using to address crime and violence to help make our kids, our state, and our, and our communities safer. For starters, we're going to do what the legislature won't, which is giving our local leaders the resources and flexibility they need to address the unique challenges facing their communities. For a decade now, local governments have been, have been asked to do more with less. Since 2011, state aid to communities has gone down even as costs have gone up. Help from the state was cut by more than 9%, while public safety costs have increased more than 16%. I've always said the state should be a partner, not an obstacle for local governments in our state. So today I'm announcing we're investing nearly $19 million for local and, and tribal law enforcement agencies in every corner of the state, whether it's training, recruitment bonuses, community placing needs, or technology. These funds will help our local and tribal law enforcement agencies address community-specific public safety needs. In addition, Milwaukee County and the City of Milwaukee will receive $20 million to invest in several initiatives to extend, to extend courthouse operations, support mental health diversion and treatment, expand pre-trial supervision, and prevent reckless driving. Jury trials and in-person proceedings were temporarily put on hold in the early days of the pandemic for obvious health and safety reasons for the entire community. And while the county, including the folks right here with me today, did everything they could to upgrade technology and get PPE to restart the in-person proceedings quickly and safely. A backlog of cases still built up. This $20 million investment will include $14.5 million for Milwaukee County to expand their courthouse operations to reduce a severe backload of cases. 
through these investments and together with our partners in the courts and state public defenders and the sheriff's office, among others, it is estimated that our program to extend courthouse hours and operations will ensure, the, uh, will ensure Milwaukee County will be able to dis, uh, dispose of an additional 100 cases per week. You know, every Wisconsinite has a right to a fair and speedy trial, and these funds will help ensure that more cases can be heard so justice can be served. We're also going to expand the pretrial GPS supervision and other pretrial programming. We're expanding staffing to ensure 24, 24 hours, seven days a week, 365 days GPS um, monitoring for those ordered to be tracking to be tracked while on bail. We're also enabling the Milwaukee County House of Correction to partner with Employ uh, Milwaukee to provide additional reentry services, ensuring better outcomes for those who come through the system. Also, we've seen increased rates of mental and behavioral health challenges in our communities. So we're going to also uh, more formally establish the county's mental health treatment court. This court helps, in, to, helps ensure individuals facing these challenges receive the support and services they need, all the while lowering incarceration rates to communities. But we also know that we can do more to support folks in, the crisis, in crisis long before they enter the justice system. So we're going to invest in integrating licensed medical, uh, mental health clinicians into the city of Milwaukee's 911 dispatch center to help respond to callers in need of mental health services. This will ensure we're getting mental health support to folks who need it with folks who are trained to help. And finally, especially in Milwaukee, dangerous drivers continue to affect kids and families and visitors in every corner of our community. In Wisconsin traffic deaths have been on the rise for two years now, and 2022 isn't looking any better. The reckless driving has basically has to stop, folks. So we're also investing $3.5 million to go directly towards improving local infrastructure and roads to improve roadway safety for kids, families, and communities right here in Milwaukee. At the end of the day, whether it's investing in mental health support and diversion to getting folks fair and speedy trial, to bolstering reentry program, we're going to follow the science and use evidence-based, data-driven strategies to build a safer, fairer Wisconsin for everyone. And with that, I'd like to introduce Attorney General Josh Call. Attorney General. Um, thank you, Governor Evers. Uh, and let me just first say uh, that this is a major investment in safer communities in Wisconsin. So thank you, Governor Evers, for this investment. Uh, I also want to thank all of the partners who are here who work to make uh, Milwaukee, Counter, Milwaukee County a safer place uh, to live. In my inaugural remarks when I took office, one of the topics I talked about was the underinvestment in our criminal justice system over the course of decades. And that's part of a broader trend we had seen for decades of underinvestment in our communities. Over the last three years, though, we've seen a real reversal in course. Uh, in the last two budgets, about 70 new prosecutors have been hired through the state budgets that Governor Evers has signed. Additional funding for law enforcement training was signed into law this year. And uh, just a few months ago, I joined Governor Evers here in Milwaukee to announce $45 million of investment in violence prevention and victim services programs. Today is a continuation of those critical investments in safer communities in Wisconsin. The kind of investments that we are talking about today empower communities in Wisconsin to take action so that decisions about how to make our communities safer aren't being made by politicians in Madison, but are being made by the people who are hearing directly from those who are impacted. Local leaders like Mayor Johnson and County Executive Crowley uh, so that they can be responsive to the needs and the concerns in their communities. But we also can't stop here. We know that the pandemic has caused all the, the kinds of harms that Governor Evers talked about. So social isolation, increased mental health challenges, increased substance use disorder. And we have seen a rise in antisocial 
behavior around the country. So now is the time that we need to make sure we are investing in critical programs for our communities, including programs like treatment and diversion, mental health programs, and funding our law enforcement in Wisconsin. So I'm also calling on the legislature in the same way that I did about four and a half months ago to take action to invest in our communities. There is a surplus of nearly $4 billion, and now is the time to make these critical investments in public safety. They've said that they are done for the session. I think they need to come back and put some of those resources to work investing in our communities, whether it's the Safer Wisconsin plan that I talked about at the beginning of November or other ways of supporting our communities. Um, we need to take action now because our communities need that support. So again, thank you to Governor Evers for this major investment. Uh, and with that, I have the privilege of introducing County Executive David Crowley. Good morning, everyone, and thank you for being here. I want to say thank you to uh, Mr. Attorney General and thank you to Governor Evers. And as many of you know, we've been enduring a challenging moment in Milwaukee County and in many of our communities uh, throughout the state of Wisconsin. And our most vulnerable residents have been deeply impacted by this pandemic. And this is a pandemic that has exacerbated generational inequities. And these are inequities that have led us to see what we've seen recently when we think about the crisis in mentor, uh, mental and behavioral health or the overdoses deaths that we see and the violence. And this is much needed funding. And what you're delivering today to us, Governor Evers, will help to support a crucial cross-section of county needs from staffing to operations uh, to employment as well to vocational preparedness programs. But what energizes me the most about this announcement is that these programs are going to utilize data-driven, evidence-based strategies to keep our communities safe. And so in a few minutes, you will hear from a partner of mine in Milwaukee County, uh, Chief Judge Trigiano, who's going to speak to the impact that these funds will have, particularly on the justice system here within Milwaukee County. But let me just say this. I stand with Judge Trigiano in helping to address the needs in whatever capacity that is necessary. And just last week, I went before the Milwaukee County ARPA Task Force and requested emergency approval for six programs from our Department of Health and Human Services, as well as our Parks Department. And these are programs that range from expanding our Credible Messengers program so more youth have access to a trusted mentor in their community, to ensuring that our housing division can continue to provide uh, uh, crisis beds to make sure that people don't continue to be in an active, dangerously, uh, actively dangerous situation, but to making sure that victims of trauma have the resources that they need uh, to overcome the cycle of violence, to also safe routes to our parks program that will invest in physical improvements in and surrounding our parks. But I strongly believe in the critical nature of today's funding from the state, and I'm also passionate about the continuing to complement the effort with our investments, particularly on the front end. So as county executive, I wanna let folks know that I remain committed, this administration remains committed to working to address the root causes of inequity and doing so by investing upstream so we can continue to improve the social determinants of health for the folks who live here. But I have to say, Governor Evers, you, you, your stellar track record speaks for itself. Um, and so I'm proud to have not only Milwaukee County, the city of Milwaukee, but as well as the state of Wisconsin, who continue to collaborate to make sure not only our communities are safer, but also looking to improve the quality of all the residents throughout Milwaukee County and the surrounding areas. So thank you for this opportunity to speak to this funding. And with that, I'd like to bring up my partner at the city, uh, Mayor Cavalier Johnson. Well, good morning, everybody. Uh, it's my pleasure to be here as well uh, as mayor of the city of Milwaukee. Uh, today's announcement is another stride forward in our collective work all together, uh, the state, the city, the county, to make Milwaukee safer. Uh, with this allocation from Governor Tony Evers, Milwaukee will direct millions of additional dollars to making our streets safer, to holding criminals in our community accountable, and to providing appropriate cost-effective responses for our police department. The number of homicides in Milwaukee is particularly troubling. Uh, so too is the rise that we've seen in this community in car thefts. Uh, at the same time in our city, the number of robberies, burglaries, aggravated assaults, those are all notably down 
uh, this year. Uh, to be clear, we're not easing up. Crime in Milwaukee must be reduced, and these funds will help us uh, to achieve those goals. Uh, building a safer community is not simple. It just simply isn't. Uh, it requires solid law enforcement, uh, but that's not all. Uh, we can make our streets safer with physical improvements. We can invest in prevention as well as intervention. Uh, we can tap into the knowledge and cooperation that our residents here in this community have to offer. You've heard me say it before many times. I believe it. Uh, I believed it then. I believe it now that partnerships are the path forward. Um, that includes partnerships in the community, partnerships with law enforcement, partnerships with our governor, Tony Evers, and partnerships with the state of Wisconsin generally. So again, I want to thank uh, Governor Tony Evers for recognizing the importance of public safety here in Milwaukee and actively joining the work to make Milwaukee safer. Uh, so thank you very much, uh, Governor. And now I have the privilege and pleasure to introduce uh, Chief Judge uh, for Milwaukee County, uh, Judge uh, Mary Trigiano. Judge. Thank you, Mayor Johnson. Governor Evers, we are incredibly grateful for your generosity and decision to allocate money from the Federal American Recovery Plan Act to support statewide public safety initiatives and strengthen our recovery efforts here in Milwaukee County justice system. This funding will have a significant impact to address problems and implement solutions together in a way that none of us could do alone. And we in Milwaukee are no strangers to collaboration and partnerships. That is the only way we accomplish great things. As chief judge, I know that because of our partnership with the county exec, the county board, the mayor, and others who work in the system, as well as the formidable power of the Community Justice Council and countless others in the courts, we were able to act swiftly, collaboratively, and aggressively to deal with the COVID-19 pandemic head on. But the pandemic legacy still faces us on a daily basis. In our con community, continuing instability has significantly affected safety, increased the number of people in our court system with criminal charges, exacerbated mental health, escalated the number of evictions, led to court backlogs, and an ever-increasing number of people in custody. As our courts recovered throughout much of the last two years, we also had delays when staff, jurors, witnesses, victims, litigants became exposed or ill with COVID-19. And like every other business, we have also seen a record number of retirements and hiring delays. The perfect storm, no doubt. These challenges have significantly affected every critical area needed for us to meet out effective justice strategies and reduce our caseloads in any meaningful way. It became clear we need additional resources to support our stakeholders and our courts. That is why the governor's decision to fund our extended and expanded court operations and mental health treatment court is so critical and timely. The ARPA funds will allow us to hire and support the staff necessary to add five additional criminal courts and to respond appropriately to the rise in violent crime affecting everyone in our community and also to support those most vulnerable in our justice system and have the necessary resources to provide the equitable, equitable justice uh, without undue delay. I'm enormously proud of our legal community for their willingness to step up in the face of these challenges. We have always had a hands-on deck approach and it would be wrong not to call out the hard work and collaboration of everyone in the courts and our co county partners. I strongly feel that my confidence in receiving these funds today is based on what I have seen us accomplish over the past two years. Like safely restarting jury trials in the summer of 2020 when the pandemic was at its worst, or using video conferencing in all our courts to increase access to justice. It has been a long, difficult, and challenging journey these two years for us and our community, but I am thankful for this infusion of ARPA funds and, are confident, and am confident it will make a difference and we will be forever grateful to Governor Evers for allowing us to partake in those funds. Thank you, Governor. Well, with that, uh, we're opening up the questions. Well, 
Well, the, uh, the parts of the funds have great uh, discretion locally, and, and so that, that's always a possibility. But uh, at, at the end of the day, what we do know is that you know clearing this uh, backlog is really, really important for justice and to make sure that people that uh, are convicted are take you know put in a put in a different place. But uh, it, it is possible. Part of these funds are. Are, are flexible and but it in, in addition hiring new police officers uh, might be a great start but after that we need to make sure that the, the state legislature does their part in uh, in making sure that uh, the, the, the city and the county are able to uh, continue the, their good work that's going to be started here and that is the t t t t t the main two words shared revenue and we have we have to have help in that direction. How much? How much of it? Yeah, I we'll be able to clear the backlog, but then again, we we, you know, that gets us through a pandemic. It uh, and a pandemic that isn't frankly over. But what it does do, it uh, puts us as a state in a position that we must, must increase shared revenue, especially for our largest city. Gov, there's a Republican perception that you and Josh are soft on crime. You know, that's the narrative. I talked to Tony and Jarko about it. How do you fight it? How do you fight the perception? Because that's their narrative. Even John, Ron Johnson's running ads. You know what they're doing. Yeah, well, politics are politics. What we're doing is providing $50 million at, at, at this juncture. We provided another $50, 000, $50 million previously all around the issue of public safety and we'll continue to do that. You know, they're gonna, they're gonna say that regardless. And frankly, I don't care. The, the, the bottom line is we've delivered where the state legislature has failed. And, uh, and you know, they can maybe start talking about that in one of their ads.